What's good, y'all? Welcome back to our NHL 25 franchise mode here with the Washington Capitals. And we are here to start the year number two sim. And before we get into that, there is a couple things to go through. So, if you missed the last episode, I very much suggest you check that one out because this team is completely different from year one. And uh, yeah, so if you haven't yet, I'll give you a chance to go ahead and click that link in the description to check that out before I spoil the lines here. So, our lineup this current minute, first line, we have PLD coming off a uh, near point per game year. Yeah, 77 points playing on that first line. Hopefully he can uh, replicate or even do even better than that uh, this year. He's going to be paired up with Dylan Strom and Frank Vetrano, who we acquired uh, in last year's offseason. We have the second line, our captain Alex Ovechkin, two goals away from the NHL goals record. We'll have to get into that here in a second as well. And he's going to be with Connor McMichael and Jared McCann, who I did edit his jersey number. No one else will wear the number 19 as long as I am the GM. That one will be uh, unofficially but officially retired for uh, Nick Backstrom. And then third line, we got our young gun line, T. Jaginla and Ryan Leonard, both going to make their NHL debuts this year. And they're going to be paired up with Alexi Protus. And then fourth line, for now, we have Jacob Verana with Kerfoot and Wilson. Defensively, we have Shabbat paired up with Carlson. Dowdy and Matheson, Faravari and Iorio, and in net we picked up Philip Gustafson. Backing him up will be Jonathan Quick. So the only change I want to make real quick: our fourth line. Obviously, Verona doesn't really fit in with that line. We have a two-way forward, a power forward, but I mean Wilson. We're using him as a penalty killer, you know, defensive guy. And then we have a sniper. So um, I want to make that fourth line. You know, more defensive. Just kind of you know get another penalty penalty killer in there maybe. And now, last episode, we had no money because we were making trades and all that. But now that the new season has started, they have had a cap inflation. So we should be able to sign somebody here as we have a little under $3 million. And these guys are only asking for two-way contracts. So uh, I do want to get a like grinder two-way forward that fits on that fourth line. So let me see here. Uh, okay, right here. Mackenzie and Whistle. Grinder. Can play both sides. Penalty killing lines. That will be perfect for us. So we'll go ahead and just offer him that. And he accepts right away. Beautiful. All right, so we'll get him in there instead of Verona. Hopefully that doesn't mess up the chemistry or nothing. Uh, so let me go ahead and call him up there. So yeah, uh, as I said, year two sim, we're going to begin here. We're going to jump pretty much right into it here after I get Entwistle in. And we will have to... Uh, We'll have to watch for Ovi because he is obviously going for that goals record that we're still trying to see live. So we'll have to uh, get to that. And then also we got to see how this team performs because this could very well be the last dance with Ovechkin. And uh, trying to contend with this this core, I would say, like, uh, you know, Ovechkin and Strom and uh, obviously like McCann and Vertrano might just be here for this year just to try to compete. So uh, I don't know. We'll have to see how we sit We'll have to see what... Um, Basically, just what happens. Go with the flow, and... Um, wow, it's not like I'm going to fucking post-game interview right now, but... Uh, yeah, so let's get right into it, actually. Uh, McKen uh, and Whistle there is right in there. Let me actually see if I can get him in on some penalty killing here. Uh, oh, he already is right there. Okay, beautiful. And then that should help out these lines as well, maybe. Okay, well, not that, but hopefully we don't get down to 5-on-3 uh, too often this year. So yeah, and then uh, obviously AHL pretty much the same. Uh, I put this guy in here on the third line just because he's a bit younger than the other guys. So uh, they're looking good here. We got Lachapov and Niemann on that force, first line with Mirosachenko. So pretty much our top forward prospects and then Kristal as well. So the top four pro forward prospects getting top six minutes there. And then defensively, we do have Cole Hudson, uh, Mugley there as well. So uh, we got some PT for those guys. And then in that, we have Stevenson and Shepard. So AHL team could make another run at the Calder Cup. Of course, they fell short last year. I think they made the conference finals, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we were going for that three-peat with them, but they fell a little bit short, uh, which, I mean, I'm not too worried about. I just want to uh, use that team to develop our guys. So uh, let's stop just chatting about everything, and let's get right into the sim here. Uh, let me open up the calendar and sim to the regular season, and we will find out what kind of team we are this year. Uh, I'm actually very... I, I have no idea how we're going to send. We could be complete shit. We could be good. We could just be mediocre. Or we can just be, like, cup contender first. I, I really wouldn't be surprised with any. I don't think we're going to be, like, President's Trophy or nothing. But 
Uh, I would be very happy with the playoff spot there. So our coach wants to start a conversation. Hey, GM Meach, this season we have a great opportunity to focus on winning and run this team the way we want. Let's establish our goals and strive. Isn't that the same message that you get? Okay. <laughs> word for word, pretty much. Uh, yeah, we'll just set a season goal. Look at our roster here. There are some good kinks to work out, but this team is good enough to compete for a playoff spot. I like that thinking. That is my goal for this team. I agree. I don't want to, you know, make our goal of the final as much as that is, but... Um, Honestly, that's what the confidence is with this team is to make the playoffs. So, uh, yep, let's go to work. That's right. I like the sound of that. So let's get to the uh, regular season, as I said. Okay, the sim will just continue. And uh, actually, I actually didn't see who our first game was against. Our first preseason was against Pittsburgh. Uh, but we'll have to see here. It's against the Montreal Canadiens. That's right, and we're in Montreal. All right. So let's get right into that here. So, um... The last season, I was watching Ovi for the tying goal and the goal and the uh, the record breaking goal, but I think I just want to see the record breaking. So we'll get into the slow sim, and then once I see him score once, then I'll start jumping in, and we'll have to uh, we'll have to sit through, and hopefully we can actually finally see him break it. So uh, yep, let's get into it. First game of the season in Montreal. Let's go. So obviously real time sim, uh, just until Ovi scores, and hopefully this doesn't take too long. And we can go right ahead and jump right into history here. As the first goal of the year is going to belong to Tej Aginla, who picks up his first NHL goal. So a uh, cool moment there as we go on the five on three power play, but we're unable to capitalize. But um, yeah, I'd love to see that McMichael on the board as well. So that could have been an assist for Ovi, but now we're looking for, okay, there it is. Ovechkin on the board in the first period of the first game. So let's go ahead and uh, let me make sure the camera is set because I have been playing a bit offline. Uh, true broadcast legacy is what we want. And shootout. Uh, same there. All right, great. All right, so let's jump right into it here. We're at the Bell Center in Montreal looking for that record-breaking goal by Alex Ovechkin. He has tied the record, so technically he's the he'd be right up there, but... You know, you want to see that record-breaking goal more than ever. So here we go. And he's out on the ice right now on that second line starting as he jump in. Caulfield breaks the line, though, for Montreal. Big save by Gustafson to start, who's working on a 13 save. I won't say the word uh, to jinx it, but you know you know what I mean. As, uh, yeah, Ovi just completely lays out. I think that was Dante Fabro. So a good start. A great start to the season. Three goals in the first period already for us. Uh, hopefully we can just get out of this period with that 3 nothing lead as Montreal has an offensive zone face-off, but won by Dylan Strome. Uh, yep, there's only five seconds left, so nothing's really going to happen here. But we will take the 3 nothing lead into the second period. Slavkovsky one more time, blocked by Carlson. And we... Okay, he passed into the net. Uh, we are good for the first period. 3 nothing lead. I love to see that. Uh... Obviously, Montreal, not the strongest team. Well, maybe, actually, if they got some good development in the offseason, they could, they're going to be scary in this game. I already know it. Uh, they could be like a dynasty-type team. They got, obviously, forward-wise, they got Slavkovsky, Suzuki, Caulfield, uh, Owen Beck in the pipeline. You got, who else am I missing? Uh, Kirby Dax there, right? And they got, um, uh, they got Demidoff coming up as well. So, And then on defense, you got, obviously, a lot of talk about Lane Hudson, uh, that's oh they got uh, David Reinbacher as well so they're, yeah there's already your top for pair for the future yeah they're gonna be loaded but uh, hopefully we can get that kind of young talent on this team soon to come but here we go Slavkovsky will carry the puck up for Montreal as they win the defensive zone faceoff Slavkovsky is shot saved by Gustafsson and Carlson has it now Dubois up to Shabbat over to Strom we need to get Ovi on the ice Vetrano and he'll just get it in come on let me see Ovi. I don't want to have to sit here forever. I just want to see that goal. We can see history, and then we don't have to watch all these games. Slavkovsky, Suzuki breaks into the zone, taking away. Shabbat now, up to Vetrano. Frank Vetrano breaks center ice. He'll break the blue line. Frank Vetrano carries into the corner. And now Strom has it. Okay, he hits the guy while he has the puck, but then he gives it up. Caulfield is pretty tired after the end of the shift. Shabbat steps up on him. There is Ovechkin. Ovechkin carries up now. Over to McMichael. McMichael, look for him. McMichael, Ovechkin, he shoots. Sig, save. Oh, man, that could have been it. McMichael, Shabbat. Carlson lets one go. 
McMahon to make Michael a big shot. Save again. Ovechkin cuts to the slot. Ovechkin right in. He scores. Alex Ovechkin, the newest leader in goals all time for the NHL. And here everybody comes. Somebody's got their helmet off in the celebration. And there it is. We don't have to sit through a million games, which is good. Everyone pours onto the ice, celebrating a once-in-a-lifetime milestone. Alex Ovechkin, number 895 right there. He just gets the puck off the half wall and just fires it right past. And it's Caden Primo on the wrong side of history. Ovechkin with two goals and two periods. Not even two periods. A period and like probably a half with how fast the clock is going. And there is it. History, number eight. I like how he did his uh, stick on fire celebration. There he goes, saluting the fans here in Montreal. As even the away crowd has to respect the history of that goal. So there it is. Yeah, about halfway through the second. Ovechkin is second of the game. Gives us a 4 nothing lead. But more importantly, gives him his 895th career goal. An NHL record. So I don't... I don't even want to watch the rest of this. Oops, didn't mean to do that. We will take that. I assume we're going to win this. If we give up a four-goal lead on the night that he scores the record, that would be pretty shit. So. And we do. We went 6-1 to one there. Uh, we'll see. Did he get a hat-trick in that game? Let's see. Um, okay, he had five points. Holy shit. And no, he had two goals but three assists. Okay, wow. Uh, so a five-point night to start the year for Ovechkin. Uh, good to see Dowdy on the board, Aginla on the board in their debuts as Capitals, and Philip Gustafson a win in his first game as a Capital. And there you go, Ovechkin five points, leaves the NHL, make Michael right behind him with four. So there we go, all right. Um, I'm not going to have to, you know, I'm not going to sit through 500, or um, when he gets his 900 school. But uh, we can slow sim it to see when he gets it. Uh, obviously, five-point start is is amazing so we'll get into the game against colorado here second game of the year off a a very good start six to one victory against montreal first period here in colorado or in washington against colorado and we are down one nothing jonathan drew in was only 26 seconds a ball buster of a goal right there second period all right down three to one tj ginla does score again uh ross colton and logan o'connor so their energy guys scoring for them let's see if we can make a comeback here in the third period and, oh, okay, there you go. Ovechkin with his uh, third goal of the year already. And Ryan Leonard, his first goal in the NHL, but answered right back by Devon Taves to regain the lead for the Avalanche. Here we go. Ten minutes left. Ovechkin again. He is off to a hot start this year. His fourth goal of the year already. And what is he? Two away from... Or, yeah, three away from uh, 900. And Sammy Gerrard with 10 seconds left. We don't even pick up a point. That stinks. Uh, oh, I forgot to click on the uh, three stars, but yeah, Ovechkin, two goals in that game, and that would be it. Seven points for him on the year already. Wow. Uh, as we are facing Minnesota next, but I mean, Aginla and Ovechkin and McMichael for that matter, off to a great start to this year. Um, yeah. Wow. All right. Let's get into this against, uh, whoops, against Mini. How many goals does Ovi have? Uh, let's just go to the record books. Oh, we can actually take a look. For the first time, we can see here, NHL, most goals, Alex Ovechkin. There he is, number one with 897 so far on the year. One of only three players with 800 and looking to be the only one with 900 here very, very soon. So let's get into this game against the Wild. He's three goals away from 900. First period, one-to-one. -one. <laughs> he is insane. Ovechkin. The first goal for us in this game. 38 seconds left in the period. Ryan Hartman did score for them. So two away now from 900. Second period. 3-3. Three to three. Matheson and Dubois on the power play there. Granlin and Rossi for them. Third period. A close one here. We could use at least a point or two here after a uh, disappointing loss last game. Kaprizov though. The uh, the tie-breaking goal. But Connor McMichael ties it right back up. 4-4 four to four here. Lots of scoring to start the year for us. 10 minutes left. And again, Granlin. Um gets the lead for them so not a great start for Gustafson this year it doesn't look like but uh, that's all right it's really early Faravari ties it right back up can we at least get a point this time that we do all right overtime let's win it come on Ovi come on be one away now and it looks like we want to shoot out that we are we'll just send it there and we do get the extra point 
Ovi does score in the shootout along with McCann. Good draw for them, but not enough as we take the extra point in the shootout. And that leaves Ovechkin two goals away from 900. As we will sim up to our game against the Boston Bruins. All right. And, okay, actually, this is a good point. So, we did keep our first-round pick for this year as a safety net in case we're not a great team. Of course, we could acquire, acquire some more at the deadline if we are looking like a shit team. Although, even if we're, like, you know, mid or something, I still am going to try to compete. I mean, this could be our last year with OV will be mine as well. But let's get a, t a look at this draft class here as, <laughs> okay, looks like we have another generated friend. You know what's funny is... I set this to low prospect quality and low... What's the other one? Draft or no, draft class quality and prospect quality. I think it's like two different things for whatever reason. And two years in a row, we have a franchise player generated. And it's funny because that happened a lot last year too. So I don't know if there's like something wrong with the coding, if it's backwards. But um, yeah, that's not right. Uh, because Gavin McKenna should be number one, and maybe he'll move up during the year. But I think this pretty much confirms there's a franchise player right here. Juha Kuparainen, uh, defenseman there. Then we have Liam Ruck, Ryan Rubrik, uh, Vigo Bjork, Kevin Kamler, I believe, is generated. Uh, Noah Kosick, Colin Fitzgerald, Brady Wasselin, and uh, Mathis Preston. They're rounding up the top ten. Uh, yeah, Ethan Belchess is there as well. He is a uh, he was the first overall pick in the OHL this past year. He looks really good to start. Uh, his big frame as well, six foot four, two hundred thirty one pounds. I did see him actually in his first OHL game against the Spirit, as uh, that's my OHL team, and I saw us raise the banner. Unfortunately, we lost in overtime, but uh, it was cool to see that. Uh, we do have Joe Aginla, who I believe is Tej's brother. Uh, so that would be really cool to land him since we have Tej. Um. And yeah, amongst other good prospects down here, uh, not seeing anybody that I necessarily know. I think Brady Smith I've heard of, if he is real. Uh, but yeah, so definitely um, definitely looks like it could be a good draft class again because we do have, uh, looks like two franchise, I assume again is a franchise player in this custom roster, but I guess we have to find out. So uh, anyway, let's get into the game against the Boston Bruins. As uh, we could move up. Okay, actually, you know what? We're not even using this goalie. Um, because we're using Stevenson and uh, whatever the other dude is. Let me see. Uh, Stevenson and Shepard, yep. And medium backup. He's not really going to develop. We can move up two rounds. A fifth to a fourth and a sixth to a fifth. I'll do that. Thank you very much, San Jose. All right, so... Fourth game of the year here as we carry a 2-1 and one record against the Bruins. Ovechkin two goals away from 900. Can he get that here? Let's find out. First period, one nothing. Tom Wilson picks up his first of the year. Uh, second period. All right, 3-2 to them. Uh, McAvoy, Pasternak, and Coyle score for them. Protus for us. And third period. I am a little concerned with uh, Gustafson. I don't know if you know the slow sim is kind of hurting his... Uh, his uh, is what's it called performance but uh, as i have followed their scores for them again so um i do just want to see when ov gets to 900 and then we can start the just sending games you know day by day as carlo again all right maybe i don't want to because gustafson is getting lit up right now so uh we'll just kind of advance day by day and see first of all see if the sim is any different and second of all see if we can uh get that 900th goal for ovechkin as uh, we're offered a third... Eh, I don't really want to trade Protoss' brother right now. Alright, so against the Maple Leafs, let me just make sure Ovi is at five goals on the year. Alright, so... Nope, I, okay. Well, I didn't mean to do that, but I guess we'll do one more. <laughs> first period against the Leafs. Uh, two to one us for Toronto with his first goal of the year and Ryan Leonard for us. Patch ready on the power play for them. Second period. Two to two, OEL. Uh, was that a late one too? Yeah, 16 seconds. Man, we just... Had a lot of ball buster goals to start the year, which kind of sucks. But let's see if we can uh, get a couple goals from over here as Pacioretty again. And, okay, Pacioretty hat trick. All right, McCann gets it back. It's becoming a shootout here in the third. Uh, Gustafson just not performing as well as if we need him to right now. Uh, three minutes left. Can we tie the game? Get a point. Force overtime. We cannot as we lose 4-3. to three. All right, no more slow sim. we got to see if uh, is that affecting Gustafson. Can I look at 
It only shows me wins, doesn't it? Yep, as Phil Kershev leads the league in points, 14 and 6 games. Wow. Um, yeah, okay, I can click on this, though. Oh, it takes me right to it. Okay, that's cool. Uh, so let me look at Gustafson. I know it's only 5 game sample size, but... Yeah, that is not good enough at all. 883 and a f uh, 421 goals against. That is terrible. Uh, Forward-wise, that first line is horrendous. Oh, my God. Negative 6. Two points for Dubois. So he's with Strom and Vitrano, right? And they're not even up here. Yeah, minus five. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, the second, like the third line even is performing like the first line. Uh, let me take a look at this again. So McMichael with eight, Ovi with ten, Aguilar with six. Okay, okay. so if I swap those two lines, I don't know how the chemistry... I don't know if I want to swap the lines completely. They haven't been... They haven't been great. So let's put Ovi on that first line for sure. And I think McMichael has to. And then do we just leave Vetrano maybe? See if we can get him going. And we'll put McCann. Although McCann, that line has been so good together. But the thing is, this line hasn't been good together at all. So let's actually put... Eh, no, we'll keep McCann on his one-timer side. He's been good already. Um, Alright, third line. They've been great, especially TJ again, left six points already. Uh, fourth line hasn't done much of anything, but we're not, you know, we're just kind of asking them to kill penalties and that. Uh, top pair, Shabbat and Carlson, not good, but Matheson and Dowdy have been amazing. So it's kind of the same deal here with defense. Uh, Alright, what if I swap them? Does it, yeah, the chemistry isn't there though. Um... I could put Dowdy and Carlson. Um, you know what? Let's try that. Let's try Dowdy and Carlson and Shabbat and Matheson. Just to try something different. And then we'll, uh, we'll advance day by day here. So against the Edmonton Oilers is up next. Let me send them to that game. Like I said, Ovi is at five goals on the year. Uh, Mark Freeman on waivers from the Rangers. But yeah, he's not going to help our team. All right, so against the Oilers, let's just advance the day here. And we lose. Okay. <laughs> this is becoming a problem. So um, that was actually Jonathan. Wow. Okay, yeah. <laughs> let's uh, let's maybe sit Jonathan Quick after that. Up against the Islanders at home. And we do win 4-2. to two. Always at 6. Okay. Okay, against Pittsburgh. He's one away from 900. Uh, as Austin Strand is on waivers again, not going to help our team. I feel like we have to slow some this. I mean, if he breaks, if he gets to 900 against Pittsburgh, that would just be perfect. Uh, let me just let me make sure I've been doing this right. One away from 900, right? Yep. All right, so we're not going to jump in or anything, but let's see if Ovi. He's already got his NHL record milestone. Can he get be the first player to 900? First period, zero zero. They're out shooting us 12 to seven. Second period. One to one, Dylan Strome for us, and Malkin on the power play for them. Third period, as Brian Russ starts off the third period with a power play goal. As we are down to 15 minutes left, and there it is, Alex Ovechkin from his office, not even on the power play, uh, as it is spoiled by Crosby a few minutes later. But there it is, Alex Ovechkin, 900 goals in the NHL, the only player to do so. Three minutes left. Can we at least tie it? Come on, milestone night. We got to. And Michael Bunting gets the empty netter. So, not a great start for us by the season, though. Um, kind of hard to ignore. We are three and five. Let me uh, let me send to like we're probably at the end of the month right now, aren't we? Uh, okay, we're at the beginning of November. So let me send to the end of the month. We'll get up. We'll get up to this game against Anaheim. Get a feel for what this team is looking like, and then we'll uh, we'll address our issues after that. But, um, definitely not the best spot so far. Uh, third and Patrick Thomas for Pew Suter. I'm going to say no for now. Uh, didn't mean to hit that, but okay. Um, honestly, I'm, not, I'm just not even going to touch it for now. Um, nah, I'll just keep Protoss' brother for now. I don't, not that he's worth anything, but, okay, why would I do this? <laughs> okay, no thanks. Uh, I don't really want to get spammed with the trades right now. I'm trying to get the sim done. Uh, okay, and now we get waivers. Ian Mitchell. Again, the Rangers moving players, it looks like, but 
we don't need him as a six to two. Actually, we lost four to one to Detroit, and then six to two. All right, like holy shit! How many teams are gonna make trades or do signings or whatever? But what's with all these waivers? Oh my god! I don't think I've ever seen this many waivers at once. Like I gotta check the message center to see what's going on. Okay, this okay. What is going on right now? This has to be a glitch or something. Dyson Mayo, we don't need. I'm stopping the sim. What is going on? What is going on? I've never seen this many waiver claims in one year, and we're only, we're not even a, well, we're barely a month in. But where's the, where's the message center nowadays? Uh, is there, is there not one? Where do I, where do I go for the message center? Uh, franchise overview. I have to be blind. There's no way. Need to report prize reports. Okay. Oh, activity feeds probably right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, player pick and trading nothing. Signings. Oh, okay. So this might be where it's at. Sign for yeah, because look at Dyson Mayo was just signed on the seventh. Yeah. So these teams just making random signings and then putting them on waivers. So, um, yeah, that was just that was just weird. So let's actually still get up to that game against the Ducks real quick. They lose again, man. This is not a good start at all. Um, seven, twelve, and one at the moment. Okay, guys, can we stop signing guys and putting them on waivers? Like seriously, this is getting annoying. Okay, what? This has to be a glitch. Like, did they break this game mode? Like, what is going on? Is it these teams weren't roster compliant? Maybe they'll stop now. And another loss. We are currently last in the Metro at 7-13-2. Okay. All right. Time to take a look at this real quick. So still leading the way for us is Alex Ovechkin with 25 points in 22 games, 13 goals. So it is definitely not on him at all. McMichael, 19. McCann, 17. Yeah, Vetrano 10, minus 10. For, yeah, he cannot play in the first line. Uh, Dubois, 13, a bit down from last year. Strom, still not where I want him to be. So I think this line just has to stay together. Um, we can try like a T. Okay, he's really slowed down too, though. That Young Guns line is really slowed down. Bottom six, yeah. Not great. Uh, Dowdy leading defensively. Oh, okay, Carlson and Shabbat are horrendous. A negative seven. Okay, okay, okay. Let me actually let me look at the goalies real quick. Probably not going to be anything good either. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. So this team stinks. Um, All right. So we're definitely keeping these three together. Let me put McCann on that top line. That is definitely our first line. But Toronto has to be moved down. Like, I just can't even... I think uh, Aginla actually developed a little bit. We're going to put Aginla... Should we keep the young guys together? I mean, Leonard hasn't been amazing. Um, I'll leave Strom on the second line for now. We got Protus, Leonard, and now Vetrano, Wilson. I mean, if I'm going to make changes to this team, it's going to have to be, like, with a trade. So Chabot has to go down to the third pairing. Who else was... Yeah, Carlson. We'll move down to the second. We do get a plus four with these two. The minus one with Matheson does scare me, but I'm willing to take that on. This I like, a plus four. So Fairview was playing, like, an 87, Dowdy, like, a 93. I would definitely take that. Um, I mean, this does get a plus three like this. Maybe this will help. Did I just, like, not even see this before? Why did I, Why is this chemistry so good now? Oh, because Ferivari wasn't in the top four. That's right. Uh, but the X factor is definitely helping there. So, I'll... I mean, these two have been shit, though. All right, I'll try it. I got to try it, though, just because of the chemistry. And then goalies just have to be better. So, I'll give this team another month. I mean... I don't want to hit the panic button yet, but we only, you know, we only get so many games. So uh, we have to have a big month here for this team to want to make a playoff run. So we'll get up to this game against Seattle. Hopefully we have a much better month because that is... Okay, game. 
what is going I might just I might turn off wage reclaims right now because this is stupid. Uh I don't want that. If I get another if I get one more waiver claim in like the next week, I'm turning it off. Cuz this is so dumb. And there it is. And the Rangers keep doing it. All right. There's something like come on EA. Like we do all this shit with franchise when we can't fix this or like address this. I'll turn this back on like post deadline, but I have to turn this off for now. This is this is getting too annoying. Uh, waiver notifications, stars only. Uh, you know what? I'll just do that and see if it'll go away. I doubt someone's gonna put a fucking eighty-three plus on the block or on the on waivers, but uh, so yeah, let's continue to get up to this game. As this month we are two and two right now, so uh, okay, there we go. We got we're straining some wins now. We're we gonna go on a winning streak. And <laughs> that answered my question. Four to one loss against Detroit. We're just, um, yeah, we're losing to Pittsburgh. Um, yeah, I don't, okay, yeah. This is not good at, okay, okay. <laughs> 12, 20, and 2. So, uh, not looking like the last dance right now. Um, this is really bad because I was hoping we'd at least be like middle of the pack, so it makes sense for me to add. But, um,. Always final year might just be celebrating that he broke all these records. I mean, that might be... I mean, he's still got 20 goals, and, like, he's still killing it. Uh, McMichael has slowed down a bit. Strom has picked it up a little bit, though, which is good. So has Dubois. Uh, so the changes seem to help a little bit with scoring. I mean, Aginla has done nothing. He's a... Okay, Aginla's playing like shit, actually. Uh, let me go back. I mean, I don't know what we can do because i want to compete but we're just terrible like straight up we are terrible uh aginla has grown to an 80 okay wow aginla and leonard have both grown to 85 so honestly i might move him up too and we might want to prioritize these two's growth right now anyway because we aren't great as it is so um there is that gustafson has been okay quick has actually been a lot better gustafson still hasn't been great uh, let me see what we did in that last month, though, as we can actually look at the game logs now. Um, wow. So he actually started off... Uh, this first game wasn't great, but these this stretch right here, these five games were amazing. And then he just went to complete shit. Last game wasn't terrible. But a 23 goals against average, that's not bad. I mean, I've seen worse. That is not bad. Um... <laughs> I mean, we can, we might as well, we got to take a look at what's available around because I just, I don't know. So browse everyone's block here. The Ducks selling, uh, completely selling. Troy Terry, only an 85 right now though. Is there Strom, Fabry? Um, Boss has nobody of note. Neither does Buffalo. Uh, Calgary, they do have Rasmus Sanderson, who isn't making that much for one more year. Uh, we probably could use the help on defense. He'd be the upgrade on the Oreo, but you can argue we'd pro probably want to try to grow him. Is, is it even worth training for him? I might just wait till the deadline. If we can pick it up, I'll, I just gotta trust this team. If they want to make the playoffs, they gotta make a run these the next couple months, because otherwise... I have no choice, but to, you know what's going to happen is we're going to be shit at the deadline, and then I'll sell, and then, actually, you know what? For the most part, our guys do have two years left. I might not even sell at the deadline to see if, like, if we can make that run after the deadline with this team, and then, no matter what, we'll just trade them next year. So, uh, Patty Kane is still there. He's still at an 85. Uh, he's got 18 points off what? He's playing like third line minutes. So yeah, he's he's still doing good for his role. Uh, he could definitely be a target. And we can probably afford him as well. Uh, Dano is still there, but again, we can't trade for him. He's not on our... Or we're not one of his teams on his no trade clause. Montreal? Nobody, excuse me. Uh, wow, Nashville got up a lot of big prospects here. Uh, but nobody we're looking for at the moment. Uh, New Jersey, no... 
No, yeah, a lot of these teams. Okay, Roger McQueen there again for the Islanders. So uh, if we are looking to sell at some point, there are some definite options. There was Michael Misa over in Dallas as well. Uh, the Penguins still selling, but don't know if we'd want any of these guys. Uh, Sharks, not really. Yeah, there's no, like, big fish so far. There is Joel Hofer. Uh, okay, this could be someone we could target. He has been amazing the last pretty much three years, uh, but especially the last two. He has been, like, an elite-level goalie pretty much, uh, and we definitely need goalie goaltending help right now. Um, so that actually could be someone we want to target. You could argue, though, I've seen a lot of these times in this game because goalies are random no matter what. You trade for a goalie that's doing good and he starts shitting the bed. So there is that. Winnipeg, nobody. Okay. So there is some options. Um, yeah, I just, I'm not going to make a move right now. I'm going to give them to the deadline. We're just going to send them up to the deadline, see where we're at. I have no choice, really, but to try with this core. I mean, I don't... There's only so much I can do. So we'll have to see if we can go on a run these le next couple months. Not a good start, though, with a 5-3 to three loss. Um, I don't know how I'm good on that for now. All right, there we go. A couple of wins. Come on, we got to string these together. There we go, three in a row. Make that, like, four or five in a row. Come on, at least. Okay, a point against Calgary, and then we lose to the Sharks. Like... We just can't, yeah, so we win three, then we lose three. Like, we just are not consistent enough, and we're already at the bottom of our division, so uh, not a good combination right there. As we are getting up to the deadline here. Well, we're, I guess we're like a month away still, so uh, yeah, we're just, now we lost like four in a row. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, we are complete dog shit still, man. All the moves we made. Looking like it's a mountain of nothing. I mean, you could argue this isn't the best built team, but it's what the options we had. You could argue we could have just prioritized development and just had Ovi's last year just be about all the records. But, um, I don't know. I just felt like I owed it to him to go for a cup real quick and then we start our complete rebuild. But, um, not looking like that's going to be the case this year as we just continue to lose games, so... Uh, we might want to start looking at that draft class, see, uh, that might be a bigger priority for us this year regardless. So we'll see here, we're still up and down right now. Yeah. I mean, we have 12 games, we have like 12 more losses in regulation than we do with wins, so that's not good. And final game against the Jets before the deadline, we do win in the shootout, but, uh, we are 23-34-5, which is terrible. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. Um, oh, we does have 51 games. What is that? 62 games, right? Or 51 points, I should say. What am I? I don't even know what I'm saying. So he's slowed down a little bit, but I mean, look at his team. Um, Ginlow there is to lean the rookies with 27 points. Dowdy 31 as a defenseman. Uh, oh, wow. I forgot Marshall was a free agent. He's actually in Chicago, so him and Bedard are probably just killing it on that line. Uh, well, obviously, actually, it might be Phil Korshev. He's still top 10 there. Oh, wait, there's Bedard 4. If that's the line, is that the line? I gotta see this. That would be a crazy, that would actually be a good line in real life because you got Martian as, like, your puck battle, you know, winner getting the puck, doing the greasy stuff, and then Korshev and Bedard. Yeah, look at that. That is a beautiful line right there. Martian leading the, the league in points right now, and he was just a free agent. So that looks to be a great pick up for Chicago. They actually got a decent team still. Um, defensively, yeah, Levshinov is up to an 87. Yeah, they are They are actually already built. Uh, Mrazic is at a 9. Yeah, so they're, yeah, they're, they're fucking, they're, let me see where the record is at. Weren't they in the playoffs last year? Uh, Blackhawks. Yep, they're first in their division. They're one point away from the President's Trophy right now, so <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they're absolutely killing it. And we're doing the exact opposite. 51 points, which is the second least in the NHL. And then Flyers are right there with us with 52 as well, but 48 from the Golden Knights. And one of the fired their coach. Uh, so let's uh, let's take a look at the draft class real quick. Uh, just to see what, what's available. And yep, there you go. 
offensive defenseman franchise. Man, once again, top two pick in this draft will be amazing. McKenna has 42 goals in 52 games over there in the W. Uh, just crushing it with Medicine Hat. Uh, him and Liam Ruck on that same team as well. And Ruck is, does he have more points than him? Oh, yeah. So those two killing it. Uh, Rubric as well, elite. Kevin Camilleri is elite. Uh, Brady Wasselin is three bars to elite, so there's a good chance he is. And then, do we have any, like, gems or anything? Um, a bunch of maybes. Any low elites confirmed yet? No. Okay, so. But either way, to see two franchise, well, one for sure. Two I assume is franchise. At least high elite, I would assume. For McKenna there, but uh, another franchise guy at least in this draft. So definitely want to want to have a top pick in this draft. So we'll take a look at the team right now in full. So forward wise, I mean just minuses all over. TJ can let minus twenty. He's having a really rough rookie year, but I mean that top six. I mean, I guess Petrano and um, Strom are playing third line now, but uh, yeah, where is? So one, two, three, four, five. Where's the other guy in the, that was originally in the top six? Who was it? Or no, I'm thinking of because Protus was on that young line. That's what I was thinking of. But yeah, um, just, I mean, Ovechkin's having a solid year. McMichael's doing okay. But even then, him and, yeah, definitely a down year for us. I mean, I can't really say that we were shit last year, but not where we want to be. Wow, Shabbat, negative 26. Yeah, these two are just terrible this year. Probably shouldn't have even had them together, but the chemistry is what what uh bought me there. And then Gustafson has honestly for having three point two three goals against the nine oh six is very impressive. Uh quick I mean three point six it's just our defense sucks, man. Shabbat and Carlson have been terrible. Um So I'm gonna break those two up no matter what. Uh yeah. Not looking great for us. The bright spot for this year, though, is that Leonard and Aginla have developed a lot. Aginla's up to an 86 already. Hopefully he can get some abilities in the offseason, as well as Leonard, who is an 85. So these two are developing really well. They'll probably play on the first line next year, if not at the end of this year. Um, so that is good to see. Uh, even Ayorio's up to an 81, so it's good to see some development from our guys. Uh, Dowdy's down to an 87, though, so we actually might want to move on from him at the deadline while he still has some value. Uh, you can argue that we waited a bit too long for him as well. So, uh, Shabbat, though, we can move at the draft um, if we want to make a big move or something. We'll have to just see what's that on the block for this year. And then obviously our goalies are both veterans, so they're not going to develop. How about the AHL? How are we doing? Um, Lachipov's up one. I think Neiman might be the same or maybe up one. Uh, Crystal, I think, is up one. Hudson's the same. Mugley, I think, is the same. Kind of record are they looking like? Uh, 30, 21, and 5. So they're okay. Uh, where are they at in the standings? They are. Uh, where the hell? Oh, is that us third? Third in the Atlantic? It's not really bold. Like the Doesn't the NHL team have us bolded? What the hell did I just click? Oh, I did not mean to click that. Are we in blue or something? Uh, okay, I guess it's not as easy to tell. Uh, but yeah, so... Hershey, they're third in their division right now, so they're going to be fighting for a playoff spot, looks like. Uh, hopefully they can do that. And then, yeah. NHL team, though, just complete dog shit. Uh, no last dance for Ovechkin, it looks like. So, in his potentially final year, it looks like we're going to be focusing on the future. But uh, the future is pretty bright here in Washington. We do have a Ginlet and Leonard as two top prospects. Um, we also have... Uh, Iorio, eh, he's not really a highly touted guy, but we do have Neiman in as well, who will be in the NHL next year. Uh, that could potentially be your future first line, or at least two guys in the top, three guys in the top six. Uh, we do have Parashak as well, high top six, Kristal, Lachapov, so, uh, Mirosachenko. So there's definitely stuff to look out for, and then obviously in goal, we also drafted, uh, Gabriel, uh, Daig, who's up to a 77 right now, having a good year over there, was at the queue, yep. So, uh, he might be up next year, too. We might just have a completely new young squad next year. I think the team will definitely look a lot different. Uh, I'm talking about next year, like we're not even we're at the deadline of this year. But, 
yeah, uh, definitely lots to look forward to with this team, but right now we are shit. So uh, we'll leave it here for this episode. Next episode, we will get the trade deadline done, get to the end of the year, and potentially the draft as well. So uh, appreciate you guys watching this one. Uh, I do have a playlist made for all the episodes if you need to catch up on anything. And uh, yeah, that'll wrap it up. And as always, you guys take care.